So welcome everyone. Uh, I would just like to highlight first, uh, let me share my screen. I would like to highlight first that all these uh, all these sessions are being uh, shared on our social media. So you see here we have uh, webinar series one, episode two, webinar series one, episode one. We also started focusing on uh, on graphics of Singapore uh, YouTube page to put our contact quite recently. So we also have our user day from this year and a couple of promotional videos. So the good thing is that you'll be able to find here the playlists with all these uh, events that have been happening. We also use uh, Instagram to promote and probably even place parts or clips of this information or this uh, most relevant information from these uh, events. Uh, LinkedIn as well, I didn't log in here. And also Articat Singapore Facebook. This has actually been the, the one that we have used the most uh, so far. So we have already uh, quite, quite a big community. Uh, yeah, almost a thousand people uh, have likes and over a thousand are following this. So here is where we share normally what we're doing if we're going to a fair or even some tips and tricks or something related to, to our local context here. So um, if you just look for Arctic and SG, both on LinkedIn, uh, Instagram and Graphisoft SG in YouTube, you will find us. So um, let's go to to the presentation itself. So today will be the episode three of the first series of this uh, web webinar called Articad Now. So as I mentioned before, this uh, is. Um, relaxed um, kind of user group meetings like we normally have in person but we since of this whole situation forced us to work from home is a way that we can be connected that we can talk to each other we can ask questions and we can see how other people work um, or see some tips and tricks from us at Graphisoft. So normally this will be hosted by me uh, I'm Marcelo Mourin uh, business development for uh, Graphics of Singapore and Malaysia, uh, and James um, Badcock, that is a BIM consultant here, also supporting Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, we will have, from time to time, uh, invited guests that will come in and also share some interesting topics for you guys. So basically, you already had two sessions. Uh, this occurs every Tuesday at 5. Um, the first one was 2D tips and tricks to, to improve project 2D project documentation that was done by me. Last week we had a very interesting uh, uh, session with Jorge Benitez on uh, parametric design in architecture in a specific project. In this case they show us how they use it in aquariums. Today James will be talking about using parametric profile to design spaces at the conceptual stage and next week I will talk about uh, building up a building materials library and enrich them with with specifications okay so that we can schedule them and take out from the model so in the first series we or the first event of this series the first episode we had about 50 plus people uh, joining it was very good we were very happy, very happy with that number in the first session uh, last week with our super guests from uh, Enzyme, they always have amazing things to show, especially combining parametric design with, uh, with BIM. They, they really take advantage of the tools that they have in their hands to document and to design uh, very complex shapes. In this case, they were showing the different spaces or different parts of aquarium. And today, James will be talking about using parametric profile to design spaces at conceptual stage. This was, is a very interesting topic because I think people look at the parametric profiles and don't see the, the capability that it has 
in terms of um, making our, our work uh, kind of prototype so that we can reuse profiles from time to time in our projects. So uh, let me give the let me give the the screen to James. So James, uh, yeah, I think I have to do it from here. So I'll make James the presenter. I think I need to make you organizer, right? I always make this mistake. Uh, maybe presenter is okay. Is it? Okay. So, okay. on to you, James. Yep. Now you have okay. to share your screen. Now. Yes. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, just have to minimize some stuff. Okay. Everyone can see? Marcelo, you can yes. see? Yes, yes, okay. your screen is visible. Okay, great. So I started off um, just starting to create some just rough uh, elements in profiles, but to see this maybe in three days a bit better. Uh, okay, so what I did, okay, maybe you don't need this chair. So what I did uh, currently, there's just a couple of walls, there's a slab, and I've just uh, put some uh, quick profiles in now and I'll make them parametric uh, in this session. So here you can see <clears throat> is a kind of kitchen cabinet. So there's a countertop, there's kind of a kitchen uh, counter, uh, kicker at the base and kind of a generic um, <clears throat> kind of cabinet above this. But all this is is uh, using a wall. So here we have a wall and I've made it a profile and I've just attached this shape. And I'll have a look at some of the other options, but first I'll have a look at this kitchen to make this uh, more flexible. So rather than just a simple extrusion. So I'm just gonna right click and edit just so to see what I've done. So what I've done in the profile. So here I've just got a couple of fills and so for example for the cabinet above it's just a timber building material and for the kind of main cabinet uh, lower cabinet is also the same material i've cut out a little bit to indicate the skirting and on top of this is a countertop which is using a stone finished building material so this is using like a marble uh, surface so pretty simple, just three fills that I've drawn in the profile and then extruded with the wall tool to get that kind of kitchen. But I can make it a little bit more interesting um, to actually have this, uh, these elements movable and be able to change the thickness. So from this one profile, I can make it uh, fully kind of parametric. So if I go back to the 3D view, you'll see there's a window, for example, here. Uh, the kitchen, this should just be a countertop here, so I don't need the cabinets here. And I don't need to create multiple profiles to kind of create each of that. I can just create one that is kind of flexible. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's start by making maybe this cabinet at the top to be able to set the, the depth of this. So maybe that's the first thing we can do. Mm -hmm. So this was added in 22, and if we go to the profile and to modifiers, I'm just gonna go and add a modifier here. And I'm just gonna call this like upper cabinet depth. So from this list, I could choose a name that's already used in the project just for consistency, but uh, this will be a new, uh, a new name in the project. So we'll click OK, and already the, the lines have uh, turned sort of to kind of this uh, black color, and all the fills have been grayed out. So it's already waiting for my input. So if I yeah, just hover it's looking it. for, for the edges or the points, right? Yep. Yeah. So if I click on, I want this edge to be movable, and I want to reference this edge to a point. So if I click on another edge, it's actually going to make a pair. 
So it means that they're going to move symmetrically, but I don't want that. So I'm just going to link this uh, first clicked edge to a corner. And sorry, I just misclicked a bit. Okay, so I just assigned this edge to this point. Yeah, if you had clicked on the on the other edge, it, it would like shrink both of them, right? Yeah, so like a webbing and an I beam, they would both move symmetrically. Yeah, so in this case, you have the point that has the circle as fixed, and the yeah. other edge will move the yeah. Yeah. So this one currently yeah. the default is four hundred. So I'm going to just save this and just let's see what this does first. So I've saved it. Go back to my 3D view. And just move this palette out of the way. And now, as soon as I added that edge, so in the 3D view, I can now see this blue edge. And if I click on this edge, then from the pet palette, I can use like the offset edge. And I can actually start varying this thickness from its default. So I'm going to keep it back at the 400 because I want this wall to be split into a few components. So basically, anytime you want one of these profiles to change, the wall should be split along that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's using the same profile, but I just want this part to not have a cabinet. So I'm just going to make this thickness zero, and then that will disappear. So it's the exact same profile, just that that parameter is zero, and it will make that uh, cabinet disappear. So what I might do is do the same. So I'm going to split it over the window. And also make this one at zero. So therefore we've got the cabinets. So even though it's, it's the same profile, so if I modify any of the building materials or main structure of the profile, then all of them will update. Just that this part is uh, customized and this segment is customized as well. So let's say, for example, for this piece, I want a little bit of a bar. So therefore, this edge should uh, push uh, further out here to create kind of like a breakfast bar. So that can be maybe the second thing that I added. So I'm just going to edit this profile again. And I want to create a new modifier. And counter top uh, offset, for example. So OK. And I'm going to click on the edge of this countertop, and I'm going to, uh, sorry, let me do that again. So pick this edge, and I'm just going to, so if I tab, it's going to connect to the point of the cabinet. So you can see that if I tab, it's going to pick either the top fill or the bottom fill. So I want to connect to the point of the bottom fill and then place my dimension. So currently this one is actually zero. So it's default depth or length is zero. So the one that we did above is 400, but this one is zero. So that's its default. And then I'll save this and back into 3D. And now I can see another blue edge appear. And I can click on this edge, use the offset, and then start making a counter. So let's say it's a 300 mil uh, off, offset, so overhang. So here now we can create a breakfast bar. Okay, so having a look at this, I can actually see I made a little bit of a, so this kicker is showing the same material as the main part of this. Uh, so I could split this off, but what I might do is customize this edge to actually give this a darker finish underneath. 
So I'm going to edit this profile again. And on this fill, I want to modify this edge to have a different color. So again, I could make another uh, fill here that uses a different building material, but because I just want to colorize this to a different color, I'm going to click on this edge and from the pet palette, choose the last option, which is the custom edge setting. So I'm only modifying this clicked edge. And the surface is currently coming from the building material, but I don't want that. So I want to override it and then choose this uh, surface to override this. So let's have a look. Um, so maybe a, a sink uh, kicker. And then OK. Save. So saving it, just make sure it's saved into the project. And then go back here to the 3D. And now that's colored to that darker metal to give a bit of more of a shadow line. OK, so I can do a little bit more here. So for example, I want some of these cabinets to be raised up or their height to be uh, different. So maybe they want to go the full height here. So we can add more parameters to this uh, block, to this upper cabinet, to allow us to move this block and to change its height. So I'm going to edit again. And I might just move this, move that dimension up, just out of the way. Create a new modifier. And let's say, Height, height of upper cabinet. And so similar to what I did with the depth, so I'm clicking the top and then choosing the bottom point and then placing the dimension. So this edge will move relative to this bottom point. And while we're in here, we're going to add another one to actually say where, uh, the base of this. So what is the distance to the countertop? So what is its offset from the countertop? So new modifier. The cabinet from counter. And OK. Then I'm going to click the bottom of this and the top of the counter and place the dimension. So because I link it to a point of a fill, so if a fill moves, then it means that this dimension, uh, so that edge is always relative to that point. So if this point moves for, for some reason, and this will be shown with this uh, height, for example. So let's go save and then see how all of those kind of are connected together. So clicking on the top and in my uh, tracker, it says the height of upper cabinet. So I can easily set this height and I can enter a value. So maybe 1200, maybe a bit high. But if I move the base of this, so the upper cabinet from the counter, and if I move this up or down, you can actually see the height is moving with it because the height is relative to the bottom of this uh, cabinet. So maybe there's uh, like a stove or something here. So maybe I need a little bit more space. And then maybe this will be at the same height as the others, but a little bit. And maybe if this is going to be something like glassware, then maybe this is going to be thinner. Mm -hmm. So you can easily just start manipulating this kind of on the fly. Once you set up some parameters, then you can start uh, kind of dictating the design, uh, I think, quite easily. And this could even have the details, let's say, of the shelves inside. Yeah, yeah. And I'll actually show that as another example uh, if we have time. So uh, here in the settings dialog, 
So I can actually access all of these dimensions uh, via the settings or the info box. So here for like the countertop offset, uh, the height of the upper cabinets. So all of these values can be listed um, in, in schedules and labels, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think this is a pretty easy way to kind of get a really schematic kitchen. Yeah, uh, and the connections the, are very smooth. So you see if the materials are the same, if the elements are at yeah, the same height, same. say yeah. the counter, everything looks very smooth. Yeah. Uh, so I have James, a, yep. I'm here. Hi, Jim. Okay. Hey, uh, this one from after creating this, we can save it as an object also, and then uh, say if we are having a typical uh, kitchens, we can use it as a you know save it as an object and place again, right? Uh, you could save it like as a maybe as a module or something, or you can create a favorite. And of course, all of these uh, parameters are stored inside the favorite as well. Yeah, uh, I'm talking about uh, save as an object is possible, right? Uh, yes, but then it won't be. But you cannot modify anymore. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, we have a question here from Wendy. She's asking yeah. if uh, we can have different renovation filter applied to a complex profile. So uh, only for the entire element, so not yeah. for the different components. Yeah. Yeah, it goes by element, the, the renovation filter. So if you use a wall, like James is using a wall to extrude this kind of cabinet. Obviously, another thing I think you could show is uh, the classification. So even though we're using the wall tool, the element can be then put on the layer uh, furniture and it can be classified instead of as a wall, be classified as furniture. So let's yeah. say if you're sending this to someone else, Let's say you use a IFC to send this to your contractor or to an engineer. It would be very weird for them to see this element as a wall, but it can go yeah. classified or whatever. So Archicad has this capability of, um, you know, being able to classify things differently. Yeah. 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 So I'll classify at least this segment. So I should do it for obviously all of them. Okay. And even in the profile, so if I go back into the profile, each of these components can still be set to either core, finish, or other. So you do have at least this classification to the components. If you need to be able to say show core only, for example, or yeah, you know, so that's also there. It makes a little less sense, I think, for doing furniture furnishings. Yeah. One, one more thing that comes in line with another question we have here. So Gary Wong is asking, can we add material selection parameters to the profile which you can change? Uh, material no, but selection. I can a bit of a trick. Yeah. Yeah, so, so material selection, you can override the surface there where you are on the component, right? Yeah. So if you choose an edge, let's say you want the top of that counter to have a a different material so you could override the surfaces there can you show where James? yeah yeah so if i click on the edge of this surface and go to the custom edge then i can override just a single clicked surface mm -hmm. or i can choose a different building material which would have a different surface or i can override the entire uh, selected fill here mm -hmm. yeah but i think what he's asking is like to change parametrically the materials without going inside the profile? Uh, I'll show you a little bit of a trick, um, which I've seen a number of users do. So I'm just gonna make a copy of this fill. And for this one, so this has the stone finish, and I'm gonna just choose a different uh, surface material for this. So I'm just gonna have a look at, uh, okay, maybe ooh, marble black, just so it's uh, more distinctive. Yeah, and then I'm going to make two more modifiers saying uh, marble light thickness and set this one. Uh, I just need to move that node just so there's this one thickness and I need to make another one. So marble dark. thickness and go okay 
and this one here. So get rid of the node. It's a little bit of a kind of funny workaround, but I've seen a number of users do this. Uh, I'm just going to make a duplicate of this counter. So basically, one will become zero and the other one will keep. Yeah. So if I then move on, both on top of each other, and I just need to so say the so yeah one of the yeah zero and the other one is fifty. So now it will show white. Yeah. Yeah, and then this one. The, the light would be zero. Yeah. There's a good option. Uh, it looks good. Yeah. So because they use building materials, then the components actually cut each other out. So you, they won't uh, do a Z fight between them because one will beat the other anyway. Yeah. But it's uh, a you can make one. Trick. Well done. Sorry. Yeah. Very creative trick. I like it. <laughs> So I've seen people do this with uh, with skins on a wall. So for example, like the plaster, and they may have five different plasters on top of each other, all with uh, different uh, paint colors, for example. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like it's good for design options. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I wanna show just a couple of other um, kind of, uh, examples so here i want to make a like a really schematic kind of sofa uh, using the kind of same principles but here i'm just using a, a beam so i need to open this profile and i need to make some uh, parameters on here to be able to get like uh, this the the edges or the, the armrests so i'm just going to make uh, so push in thickness. So therefore, the cushion will have a thickness. And then make another one saying back cushion thickness. And set the back cushion to also have a thickness. So I need to make probably about five, and then the sofa back height. Go okay. So this will set the height of this uh, back piece. And I need to make another one, which is the sofa base thickness, which will be this sofa part here. And I'm just gonna put this down to the origin because I want to know what the sort of overall height is. And another one for the legs. So I'm just gonna go here and go leg height. And for this one, I'm actually going to add uh, another edge. So I'm gonna click on the little grip here, click another edge, and then choose the direction. So basically this one dimension will have these two edges moving simultaneously with this one dimension. So I kind of made these other ones a little bit quickly just because it was using the same technique as before. But this one, I just added a second edge. So let's see now with all of that uh, built in, what we can actually do to this sofa now. So hopefully I didn't go too fast. Okay. So along the reference line, I'm going to add a segment. So this is a beam. So in 23, and uh, we added segments to beams. And I'm gonna modify the lengths a little bit later. But now we've got basically three segments. So the end pieces I'm gonna make as arms, and then the middle piece will kind of stay as it is. It could be curved as well, right? Uh, yes, yes. The same as the walls. <laughs> it's and... like a love seat or something. Yeah. Yeah. So here I want to make the, so the cushion zero, and I want to make the back 
zero and this one also to zero. And I might just open up the settings because I have a few overlapping lines. And the sofa base thickness, so instead of being 350, so maybe it's a 500. Or 650. Well, yeah, it has to be higher. So let's say something like this. So now it looks like a sofa edge. And it's exactly the same profile. Yeah, same profile. So I can see now for the middle section, I don't need the legs. So now in the middle section, I'm going to go here to leg height and put this down to zero. Croissant. And zero. So now we don't have legs in the middle part. And to get a copy of this other end, I can uh, so pick up hopefully from this part and inject into this part. Wow. Yeah. Now that's I have a so really again, good. that's not, if we, you want that as not a beam, just go and classify it as furniture again. Yeah, and if I open up the settings for the whole beam and go into the segments, so here we can see the three segments. So the first segment is currently showing as flexible. So let's say fixed, and let's say it's just a 200. And the last segment is gonna be the same. So it's a fixed segment and then 200. And then we'll keep so the middle one flexible. Culture, but, yeah. So now when I stretch this beam, I can make it like a two-seater, three-seater, five-seater. And the arm will also be fixed, always and be the, fixed. And the arm will always be fixed. So I can make it like a single seat. Yeah, so I think that's also a pretty good, uh, so it doesn't show the, the cushions, but I think as a schematic um, sofa, then I think that's pretty, uh, pretty easy to do. Okay, uh, I'd like to show one more example. So using the same sort of techniques, which is this uh, kind of shelving unit here. So um, uh, what we could do, so currently it looks like it's just fixed to the wall. So we need to have some uh, some framing, for example, like on the ends. So doing the similar thing that I did to the sofa here, I can now do to the shelving. And we could actually have each of the segments where the shelves are like uh, moved up and down, for example. So let's have a go with the shelving. So you could imagine this could also be like a wardrobe and things like that as well. But um, we'll just try to recreate like an IKEA do-it-yourself uh, um, shelving unit. <laughs> Go into the profile. So here it's just a couple of profiles, a couple of fills just using the timber. So I just made one and then just repeated it. And a couple of little legs down the bottom here. So I'm going to make a new one to start with to say um, frame height. And go OK. And I want top of this and I'm going to add an edge because I want the other one on the other side to also move in the same uh, same fashion. So let's just start with this one for the moment and I'm going to go back into my 3D and so similar to the other one I could just make little segments graphically but I might do this uh, in the settings dialog just because it's going to be quite narrow. So under segments, so this is a, a beam again. So I'm going to turn it into a multi-segmented section and I'm going to add three. So the first one, I'm going to make a fixed size and only say 50. And then the last one, I'm going to also make fixed and also quite small, 50. And here under the profile offset modifiers, the frame heights, I can then make this 
uh, so say 1600. I maybe have to do this graphically because I don't remember what the overall height is. So let's go edit and this segment and just grab that offset movable edge to the top. So now I've put frames. So now I'm gonna just uh, pick up this one and then inject it onto the last piece there. So maybe for this middle section, I don't want the feet. So in the settings for this middle section, I could just make this frame height at zero. And therefore it doesn't have the legs. So I could make a, another gap. So I could split this middle section in half to make a, another segment. So maybe this is something we can do. So if I open up the settings and this middle section, I'm gonna add add because I want this middle one to be again fixed at 50. And I'm gonna make sure the neighboring two are gonna be 50, 50. So half, yeah, and now this is half. Uh, to get the same settings, I can just actually go copy this setting and paste it into this sex setting. So I could do it graphically or I can just use the right click. And we'll go okay. So then add that adds then a frame in the middle. Okay, so let's ha let's see how we can actually like move one of these shelves. So I may not do it for all of them, but let's say this this shelf I want to be able to move up and down independently from another segment. So let's go edit and uh, there's one, two, three. So let's say fourth shelf position okay and I'm going to say the top of this shelf is relative to the next shelf but if I just modify this one parameter then only the top edge will move and therefore it will change its thickness so to move the other edge I'm going to add an edge to this dimension so therefore both of these uh, both of these edges will move simultaneously in the same direction. And then save. So now if we go into here and then go into edit, and then click this middle section, and then click one of these edges, then I can easily just move this shelf up or down. And it's always relative to this shelf. So you could imagine you could add another, say, five or six uh, parameters to adjust the other shelves. And then you've got an IKEA, uh, IKEA cabinet. <laughs> yeah. And because these are three fixed. Uh, fixed widths, but these two are flexible. Then if I modify the length of this, then you can see that I can now make it sort of much skinnier, but it doesn't modify those fixed, uh, fixed segments. Yeah, once we have all these profiles set on the library, it's quite useful for us to, and we know how they work, right? It's quite useful for us to create design yeah. variations. Yeah. Um, okay, so I just want to uh, add a lamp. So here I've just got a column. So I'm going to make use a, a simpler technique to do that. So rather than creating kind of a parametric profile. So here I've just got a, a simple column. Just to kind of fit out the whole IKEA, the IKEA feel. So if we go into segments and I'm going to make it a multi-segmented and I'm just going to add a couple of segments 
And so for example, the bottom segment, I want to make it round, uh, fixed length, but I only want to make it say 50 mil because it's just going to be a disc and I need to make it a little bit wider so the whole thing doesn't topple over. So let's say maybe 300 and maybe a different building material. Actually, I might just override the surfaces for now. Um, so let's say it's black, black base. Uh, maybe it's too thick, too thick, so 30 mil. And then the middle sec segments will also make round. And then the upper segments I'll also make round, make it a fixed length. And let's say this is, uh, say, 500. Yep, that looks better. But for this top segment, I'm going to make it a tapered segment. So the top, uh, Top radius is maybe say 200, and then the bottom radius is maybe 400. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. And then override the surfaces to something that is uh, a bit nicer. So you could actually make a surface okay. that is self illuminating, for example. Make it concrete. Concrete. Gold. <laughs> Gold. No, okay. Let's go crazy. Okay, I'll stick with gold for now. Yeah. Okay, so there we've got a fairly simple kind of IKEA lamp. And again, yeah. if I stretch the heights, then I can make it like a, a table lamp versus a standing lamp. Yeah, nice. So we can play so, around with these uh, variable and fixed dimensions to, yeah. to show yeah. the change of profiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So any questions? <laughs> yeah, I think everyone is super quiet. Oh. I think you have really good uh, examples. So anyone wants to ask something? So basically the idea of this session is to show you how, you know, instead of looking just at the profiles, just for a, a detail on a building, we actually can use them for early uh, design stages or even to create furniture or to, to showcase how how strong is this capability of of the parametric profiles, <clears throat> or even using the the variable profiles inside the 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 beams. In in this case, you use a lot the beams in, as an example or a column. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just yeah. don't forget to classify them properly. Otherwise, it will be a bit weird to have uh, you know yeah, have this chair as a beam. Yeah, a couch on the layer of, of a beam. Yeah, so I just classify as furniture. Yeah. Can you also show them the result on the floor plan, how this will uh, uh, yep. work? Yep. Yeah. So these beams, I just need to change the floor plan. So currently it's, uh, it's just showing as a symbolic view. So I just need to change this to a projected view. So it's a bit more yes. detailed. Yeah. So if we do symbolic, you will just look into the outlines of the beam. If yeah. we do projected, it will show as if it, there was a normal cutting plane at 1.1 meters and then looking down. So we will actually represent the element as, 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 as it is modeled, right? Yeah, and then with the new cover fill, then you could make a, like what you showed in the first week, you could make an image fill. Yeah that uses a, that kind of fabric to make it appear on the floor plan. It should look quite nice, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so for the wall, this overhead. Yeah, I might need to like because the 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 wall versus the beam have a little bit different settings. So yeah, but anyway, the idea is you know how to speed up this at the early design stage, uh, and you can imagine once we have built up built up a good library of this 
complex profiles, then we can add in, let's say, a prefix to these profiles so that we know, yeah. you know, that these profiles are for early design stage, these profiles are for um, construction drawings or uh, shop drawings. So, yeah, I think this is very inspiring, James. Thanks for cool. sharing. So, uh, anyone else could have a question? So, as Marcelo said before, so I could make this uh, curved, which would be a little bit strange, but yeah. So then that's a curved couch. <laughs> well, let's say you have a kitchen uh, or do you want to curve the counter or something like that. This gives that flexibility. So it's quite. Yeah. Uh, Maslow, normally... uh, Mas Maslo, there is a question from Bindi. Yeah. Uh -huh. so the renovation filter. Oh, another one. Okay. If we have a rounded edge, can we use the parameter in the complex profile too? Or does it have to be a line? Uh, it has to be a straight line. So it uses uh, the same technique as like if you draw, so if I just draw a simple kind of slab and a fillet, an edge, then it will use the same technique. So if you apply the offset edge, it will be similar to this offset edge here. So yeah, the offset so you would remove that point. Unless. Yeah. You you add it to or you change that point specifically, right? Uh, it will always do this, so it'll always just offset that one edge. But you can or you more. can, but you put can put one only on the point and not on the edge, right? Uh, you can put it onto an edge, uh, referencing to a point. Yeah, so that yeah. would work, right? And it won't work on uh, curved segments. Yeah, not yet, anyway. Well done, Wendy. You catch the the loophole, <laughs> the limitation. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, on this early design stages, we, you know, to do all these changes, I don't think we need to go into the details of if if it's curved to or to have it changed. Yeah, and that will likely create a lot more polygons than probably you need or. So it's kind of better to have something a little bit more boxy just to give the overall impression, I think. Yeah. So we have another question from Gary that is asking if you use, can we use a profile for a special window or door design? Actually, we can. We can even model a window from scratch or a door from scratch, or we can model just a door panel or a window panel. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say, Gary, we that's a, a good tip for a next, uh, the next episode so we will take into consideration and do an episode about this so how we could create a door uh, uh, you know a custom door or a custom window right yeah i think the the custom leaf and stuff would be would be good to show here yeah. yeah and even uh, create a whole door or window from scratch well let's see mm -hmm. half an hour would be enough so normally we Target this demos for about half an hour so that we have some free time to to have this uh, Q&A uh, part. So I yeah, have a question. That, that would be enough. Sorry, uh, Kihua here. I have a question. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I think it's very interesting uh, to use the profile method to to create all this. I'm I'm just wondering, like taking for um, taking the open shell, the cabinet, as an example, um, mm. are we able to produce the sh the schedule? That means based on the elements, like how many shelves and how many frames, uh, mm. are we able to derive the schedule from of the elements from uh, from this by using this profile method? Actually, uh, I don't think so. As if as it is one element now, right? Yeah, it creates one element. element. Yeah. Okay. You so can do there's no way to like break it up. No. Well, so, um, we, for that you have to do it manually to break it down into parts. Okay, okay, okay. Alternatively, what you can do is uh, create uh, properties, attach the properties to the object which you want to schedule it. And uh, yeah. that uh -huh. part, if you fill, fill it into the object, it's manual uh, filling in. Actually, it's like a data entry extra strap. Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, we use that to set schedule it. Yeah. Oh. So once it's classified so as like, an object, 
Yeah. Okay, that means now I, I see I see three long shelves and two short shorter shelves, right? So I can mm -hmm. actually label them and, and they will be derived out from the schedule, is it? Yeah, so you could can you show James, select the element and go under the properties. So we could have under classifications and properties, we could create here a property that once you classify that as a furniture, we could have on the furniture one property that is let's say number of legs, number of shelves, right? So you in this case, what Chidam said is that we still have to key it in manually, but at least you have the graphical representation automated and you would have those parameters available there on the schedule. So you just have to key in four or three or two or whatever. And then you can even add what is the material, what is the, the profile. So yeah, being a one bulk element, you would have to feed the parameters manually. Yeah, so when you schedule it from the geometry, it will consider these as kind of either as one element or as individual kind of segments. Mm -hmm. So you can you can get the information from the parameters, like the offset parameters themselves. So, for example, what the offset or thickness of these shelves are and the length of this segment, but it doesn't really consider that this shelf, for example, goes through all of them. So this would have to be then the beam length. So it's not a direct one-to-one -one kind of comparison. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, in early design stage, uh, the element with this level of detail would be good enough. If you want to, you know, get to that level of scheduling and all that, you know, that involves, you know, the model having uh, more and more detail. So sometimes more detail means exactly that: break it down into sub elements, and then you can schedule them separately. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. Normally, use uh, complex profile to model surface drains, but we're not mm -hmm. able to. Like, if we use the beam command, we can make it rake, right? We can make the beam rake with our profile for the drain. But the problem is the top, then is also raking, but we want the top to be flat. So can this complex profile change its depth or does it have to always be horizontal? So you want the profile to be like this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, you can do that, yeah. You can do that, yeah. So you that's, a, that. that's a, a parameter that we can add to it. But if, uh, Catherine wants the top to be flat. Oh, yeah, the, I want the top to be flat. Um, okay, sorry, I just need to make like a surface that. drain. If we are modeling a surface drain. Yeah, because I would need to fix up the. Uh, but what should I use? Should I use beam or wall? You had to yeah, use I'm, beam, yeah. Uh, you with can beam. use beam with the U profile that you want, the same. Yeah, yeah. And then you say that that U profile can be expanded to lower, but the top remains the same. Remains horizontal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so James, on uh, one edge you will have it like this, and the other edge you will have it like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you could yeah, use the tapering yeah. segments, tapering, or even just on a wall profile and just extend the profile that is extruded. Uh, sorry, I'll make a. Uh, James, uh, you have the AC twenty three demo video. They were showing the beam, how you change the beam with the cross-section of the beam they are changing, right? Yeah. But even an I-beam here, if you choose an I-beam there, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the I'm complex trying. profile of the I-beam. Ah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, click OK. Then you just extend in one side the, the height of it. So it shows that it's flat on top. Yeah, so this one is tapering, but it's just because the profile is set at the center in the profile manager, that's all. Yeah, so it's tapering for both sides, but if you, you can go on the profile and, and change that, that one to just taper from one side, right? Both sides, top and bottom, right? 
She was done. She made the eye smaller than the eye, the other hand, and tapered about its excess. But it tapered like that equally? Yes. So then you would just tip it. No, you cannot. James, I think that instead of like tapering to up and down, you just want to taper. Keep the top as fixed. Okay. Oh, it's the other that way around. The other way around. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. So what? I I I will show you that. Valina, have something. Ah, yay. yay. Okay, so it's just that instead of an I beam, it had to be a U shaped beam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, actually we're, the, we're the doing profile. something where, where we need that. We need this. Actually, the profile parameters, everything is the same. Only inside the settings, beam setting, you have to choose the tap, tapering option. Then you can change. Yeah, James, we can show that. Yeah. The settings of the beam. Yeah. So the. Uh, under the structure, yeah. How, how did you right. know how to make it flat? Uh, which, like, where did you set the for it to be Can flat? Can you click on the little arrow, uh, James? If you, if James clicks on the little arrow, we will show the dimensions for the tapering. So it starts with this much, and it will end with that much. Uh, and is that uh for the okay, so it's top and so you have uh, a. Uh, initial thickness or initial dimension and then you have an end dimension so the tapering yeah. will follow that so you okay, can change we, this one as long as we know it can be done we'll figure it out or, yeah, or, or call uh, Maslow to come or, yeah. or call us <laughs> <laughs> uh, just yes. wondering uh, does this tapering also work for curved beam does it work the same way uh, unfortunately, curved beam, curved beam uh, tapering doesn't work with curved uh, beams. Okay. Because uh, the so way Catherine, you cannot have a curve for a surface drain, yeah? yeah. <laughs> I think curved beam cannot break, right? I know I had this problem. When you curve the beam, you can't make it break. Is, is that is that still the case? Curve and slanted, right? Cannot, right? Uh, can you curve and plant that one, Jim? Uh, just because it uh, it can't be tapered and curved. <laughs> yeah, make, it, make it not tapered. No, because the way that uh, when it's curved, yeah. it basically splits into segments, and so each yeah. of those segments would then have to be. Yeah, tapered. you have to do. Yeah. You have to do segments. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah. Okay. So do you mean what? curved in elevation or plan? Plan. I think so. I think plan is okay. Yeah. They want to do it in plan. This is possible. Yeah. But can it? Can it? Uh, yeah. Can it? Uh, if it taper, it will then. I think they want to now slant it. It's like a beam for a lamp. Yeah. Understand. Okay. Can it rotate in the vertical plane? No. That, that's not possible. Then. Rotating yeah. vertical plane can. You want to do like a beam like this? Can't rotate. He's been saying can't rotate. He's trying to stop. Rotate the vertical plane. Vertical so plane, yes. You, you cannot rotate in two axes at the same time. So horizontal and vertical. Rotate yeah. like this, but not. not no, let's go. No, no, no. Okay. Um, yeah, so I can only yeah. rotate around the axis yeah. okay. with the curve. Uh, yeah. uh, Maslow, there's a question from Gary. Yeah. Uh, so I think he's material. suggesting for Kiwa that you could have create a new building material for each uh, shelf and then he, we could list and, and support yeah, and then yeah, we could yeah, list yeah. by, by yeah. building material. It's a good yeah. suggestion, Gary. That's yeah, a good maybe. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now the materials have have properties. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you could have a shelf of material material, and then you see how many times that one is. Uh, yeah. 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 That's a good one. Yeah. 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 
So this, and, uh, this is the purpose of these sessions, is to come out with this uh, interesting workforce. A uh, question for James. Uh, you can actually, there, we have this uh, creative, uh, uh, like uh, applying the shader, right? Can we, does it work on the shelf? Can we apply different uh, shader materials to the shelf? Uh, do you uh, mean like what we did to the counter? Yeah, something like that, but uh, using the menu under the uh, uh, creative imaging, there is a option for you to apply shaders, right? So surface painter. Uh, it will do That's it for, so the surface painting, right? yeah, it just uses it the works? override. Uh, it will probably just use the overrides here. Mm -hmm. But so um, uh, that will override all the materials, yeah, at the same time. Yeah, it will to... override the extrusion, I think. Yeah. So everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have it split, it will override by that materials separation. Yeah, so I can show. So I can go surface painter. I think but, with uh, these element, let's go brick. <laughs> let's make a brick shelf. Yeah. Brick. yeah, so you can see that it will override it will everything. All. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we had it split by different materials, it would. You can apply different oh. materials. Yeah, yeah. But again, yeah. I, this is this is part of further developing the model and the idea or the focus of this one is and, uh, how we can do in the early con early concept stage. When we are so, when you are doing this, uh, applying the shader, uh, just be careful if it's a large model, and uh, if it is a uh, this surface is used in uh, many places, it may take a bit of time to apply the material. Just be careful. Yeah. 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 Good, good one, Chidan. So, uh, James, I think that I will wrap up the session then. Yep, good. sure. It's, Do you want to kick uh, me off, or <laughs> <laughs> we have to clap I'll for James? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll give you the option to leave pol politely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Okay. So I'll keep sharing my screen then, and uh, basically, as uh, last last week. Uh, I'm sharing here the the links to follow our social media. So if you're not following and to get the latest updates, promotions, events, um, just uh, subscribe to to us. Um, also, we have uh, we ask you to to complete the short survey every week to. Um, to help us, you know, to improve and see what are what are your suggestions for for us to take into consideration. Some of those suggestions we can uh, make them happen, um, you know, from one session to another. Some of them we will take into consideration for the next series that we will actually um, release the calendar on the next session. So next week we'll have the fourth session of this. Uh, uh, webinar series, uh, fourth and last episode. So you'll see um, what what is coming for the next uh, season. Uh, so even if you don't, you're not able to join next session, we will send you the updates through email. Um, so whatever suggestions you have, you can just point your camera here, go to the short survey, and and feed those, those details. And uh, lastly, like last week, uh, I give you the updates of the ongoing training courses by Graphisoft Singapore team. These are given online, so it's actually easier to have more people joining than our physical rooms that have the maximum capability of 12 people. And the uh, next basic training going on will be on June 16 and 17. Then we'll have advanced uh, modeling on June 24 and advanced documentation on June 23. So you can uh, register for these trainings uh, under graphisoft.com.sg slash courses slash index. So yeah, pretty much this wraps up our session. Um, let us know if you have last questions. If not, I see you all. Anybody wants to uh, 
and if anybody wants to volunteer for presenting in the future yeah you can us. reach out to me and uh, i'll make sure you guys have a remarkable session <laughs> So, uh, thank you very much, all of you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I will stop the recording and then you guys. <laughs> <laughs>